Hey everyone, welcome to them Metal Guns and Outdoors. Today on the workbench, we have a Marlin Model 88M1. You will notice, this is a lot shorter barrel than most of your older 22 rifles. No, this is not a youth 22. You see by the stock, it's a full size stock. Shorter barrel, so this is the carbine model. This was sent to me by my buddy Tim. He wants to do a total restore on it. Wants it working perfectly. We're going to be engraving his name and the butt stock and engraving and coloring in a Texas flag. So I think this will be really cool and really different. All right, we've got to see what's wrong with these and what it's going to take to get it repaired. So this may be a two-part video. We'll see. First things first, chamber's open. It's actually stuck open. There's no bullet in there. Take the tube out. Oh, no bullets in it. So she's 100% empty. Let's go ahead and get her apart. Let's see, first thing we need to do is get this front band off of here. Take this front band, which is a small screw. Sound like somebody made my dog mad. All right, that screw's messed up. Let's keep filling with some different bits and see if we can get one to really bite in there. We can take a Dremel and clean that screw up and it'll be fine. Let's go ahead and get us a uh, magnet tray here out. The way you know you won't lose your stuff. Alright, there's our band. Then we're going to come up to the top. Screw here and here. It's like about the same size. That'll just come right off of there. Now it should break down uh, just like the regular Marlins, I assume. But we'll see. Oh, come on. And a big screw on the end. And there we go. All right, you see the screw here holding a trigger and a trigger housing in. There's a flat washer slash nut right in here. That's why you don't take that out. That's why you take the gun apart first, then you take this one out. Oh, it's stuck in there.
There we go. Be careful because uh, even though this one here seems like it is some kind of a aluminum or pipe metal, some of these are plastic, so you don't want to be careful with them or you will break them. I always put this screw back in just a little bit. Helps me pop that out. And when you're doing a uh, total rework on one, definitely get that out of there because you will lose it. There we go. Right, now it's got almost everything on the stock. Let's go ahead and take our uh, butt plate off because we are going to be redoing this stock assembly. Grab a Phillips head for that. This butt plate looks good, it just needs cleaning up and it'll be fine. Alright, that's got our stock. We'll set this over here out of the way. And now the gun itself. Look at it real close. This one may come apart a little different than most of them. Let's see here. Yes, it does. If you'll remember on the uh, Model 60s, there's just that plastic push pin thing right there. These actually have a screw into a screw style housing. Then on the front, it's basically a screw on each side. Put them two in there so I know that they're different. Basically, just pick that up. That assembly comes out of there. Actually, it doesn't look terrible. Now, Tim said he'd done a little cleaning on this beforehand. So I see that's why it doesn't look so bad. Tell you what we'll do with that assembly for the moment. Set it here on a paper towel. Grab a little bit of our crow. Let that sit down there and soak real well. Stuff right there will break up just about anything, guys. Now, this is stuck bigger than a dog. There we go.
Yeah, it's manhandling on that a little bit. Now the spring is bent. And we're missing a spring. The spring housing is bent. Basically, this goes in here, then you'll have your, your spring assembly here. This goes in there, and this sits at the very back of the gun, and that is your spring for your action. Just make sure it wasn't down in there all crumbled up or something. Grab us a pick. Go down there and make sure nothing's down in there. No, nothing's down in there. All right, so we know we need a spring. And besides that, this assembly looks fine. Firing pin and everything. Yeah, guys, it's always worth the time to just sit here and uh, I mean, look at things real close, see what you got to work with. Uh, that's just a reflection down in there. All right, let's go ahead and set this here. Put a little bit of a crawl on it, especially on that fire pin. Looks like there might be just a little bit of rust down through there. Besides that, this gun doesn't look really bad down in the housing part. See? Doesn't look bad at all. Tell you what we'll do. I don't really think this one's going to be that bad of a job. I mean, we've got to refinish it. You can see where all the blue's worn off of it. But besides that, I don't think it's really going to be that bad to do. No, not bad at all. Not bad. Ah, right, so far as parts go, everything in here seems to look fine. I don't see nothing broke. We're out of place that I can see. And all of this seems fine. We need a spring. And that bar. I think that's about the only parts that we really need. See, here's that bar. Oh, there's a bar. There's a spring. Now, I just took this one out of a... Uh, a Model 60. But I want to say that they're all the same. I'll know here in a minute. Well, would you look at that? Works perfect, so we don't have to go out and order no parts. That's why I will buy, quote, junk guns when I can get my hands on them. Because you never know what kind of parts you're going to need. Now, something like this, this would have killed this project here by a week, at least. Having to wait on a part and having to order a part, and of course you got to charge the customer that much more. If I already have it, and I can charge them a lot less money, and bam, 
We just saved a week on our project. All right. Well, I think we're going to be able to get this thing together just without any issues, and it's going to run just fine. I think the biggest thing is uh, getting it refinished. Don't know about this receiver, as y'all know. These receivers are painted. But I have gotten lucky and got them to take bluing. See, the receiver's painted, the tube's painted, and this front side is painted. But like I say, if we're lucky, we can get them all to blue up and everything will be the same shade without, uh, without having that two-tonish look to it. All right, well, not bad, guys, not bad. See what we got to work with here. Oh, yeah, this thing is just, uh, it's actually in really, really good shape for what it is. Let's go ahead and get our rear side off of it. Just slides off, regular, uh, we call that weaver mount. I think you call that a weaver. All right, now to get the tube off, there is a little roll pin right down in here. There's that roll pin. Yeah. Well, I got that stuck in there. The tube just slides right out. That will normally just knock right out of there. As you see, if you got some rust on it, it's going to take a lot of cleaning up to make that happen. All right, now our front sight, see how it comes off of there. I don't know if that's an Allen head or what in the top of that. I would think it would be. Yeah, I think there's an Allen screw right, right down there, right behind the blade. Grab some Allen wrenches and see. Probably gonna be one of these bad boys. There we go, that's the fit. Well, I figured that thing would have been just rusted to death and super tight in there. We're now getting it back off. That's going to be uh, something to get done. All right, I got the Allen head up far enough, I'm sure of that. Take it all the way out to be 100%. I just need to clean it, get some uh, oil on them threads anyway. Oh, we got a hammer. 
with the plastic end. Alright guys, that little sight is really, really stuck on there. I'm going to have to let this thing sit for a little while. Hopefully some of this crawl will seat down in it and loosen it up a little bit. Because we definitely don't want to break it. All right, let's let that sit and let that be. Well, since we're, I got all the parts underneath these paper towels soaking, we're going to let that do its thing because I don't want to break anything, try and take it apart any further, especially that front sight. So let's let her soak for a little bit. We're going to go ahead and work on our stock. Uh, once his last name engraved on this side, and the other side, we're going to do the Texas flat. And as you can see, I thought this thing was plastic when I first looked at it. But no, it, it's real wood. See that crack right there? That's where I'm going to start the name. And when we grind into that crack, it'll get rid of it. At least I think that's a smart move. Let's see. There we go. Get up here where y'all can see it good. I know the light ain't the greatest in here today. All right, yeah, I think that'll look well. You know how it is once you engrave, that's it, it's done. There we go. Turned out pretty good. Still uncertain what color we're going to inlay it with, but then again, we have to uh, get this whole stock refinished anyway. I just like to engrave first. That way if I do make some little mistakes here or there, I can try to sand them out. And I ain't ruined the finish that I spent a lot of time on. Now, never done a Texas flag before, so let's see what we can come up with here. Well, it's going to be... Well, this one I printed out is a little too big. Let's see what the size of it is. Four and a quarter. Six and a quarter. All right, so let's go. Uh, what if we take an inch off? It's still going to be too big. Let's do a two and a quarter 
by four and a quarter. That should be appropriate. And that blue got faded right off of there, but that's okay. Alright, let's see how steady our hand is this morning. Oh, we got our lines in there pretty good. Let's see how we can do on this star. I'm thinking about changing out a yeah. more pointed bit for that star. Guys, not too terrible. Got it all engraved in there, and the name turned out really well, too. Alright, put this stuff up. What I'm doing here, guys, is just let's say take basic orange cleaner, and I just grab a piece of Scotch Bright. Just keep, uh, every time I walk by, I'll spray it down and uh, scrub on it a little more and rinse and just keep repeating until I get All it right. done. And what we was fussing on yesterday was this front sight. I soaked and soaked and soaked this thing and it just does not want to come off. So in a situation like that, I think it's better to leave it on than take a chance of breaking it and not being able to get one. We still get all of this stripped down, cleaned, re-blued and everything with that side on there because actually that's the only choice we have versus breaking it. And I'm not going to break this thing. Right, we have all of our parts over here soaking in the crow and they'll be fine all those little parts are sitting here we didn't lose anything and yeah this is next day that's why you see I got a long sleeve shirt on it's a little cool out here I think the first thing we'll do is go ahead and do our barrel and our receiver and for them I'm going to run over to the sandblaster of course I won't take the camera near the sandblaster and go ahead and get them blasted and then we'll come back and do us some bluing let me see if we need to blast this blast 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 That's it. Right. Almost got my top sitting up here. Let me go ahead and get that spray down right quick. All right, well, I'm gonna run over and sandblast, and then we'll come back and get on. All right, guys, got some of the stuff sandblasted pretty good. Didn't get the tube. Didn't get the barrel and the uh, receiver that well. Something happened, and the sandblaster just died. 
I think it's all this uh, moisture. It's the only thing I can figure. I probably got my sand wet in there. So, we'll come up with some alternative ways. There's our tube. I'm just going to grab me some scotch bright. There we go. Got to strip that down there spot. This looks good. All right, well, can't chuck this up in the drill. We're really going to have to do that the old-fashioned way. All right, guys, the acid wasn't doing too well. I figured it would have done better than it did, but I reckon that's probably like a baked-on epoxy type of paint. So what I did was took one of the little prep pads uh, on one of my air tools, get all the paint off of it, then grab me a uh, 3M scotch bright, and I'm just keeping on going over it to get all the sand and scratches out of it. But I mean, we got her good and clean. Like I say, we need to uh, scotch bright our barrel a little bit more. And at least we got the majority of the barrel before the sandblaster gave up. That's cool. And in between times, I've been running over and working on the stock. Let me show you that right quick. You all see that? Gunk's finally starting to come off. I've been over scrubbing the dog out of this thing. But we'll get the it done. The thing we need to do is get these parts ready for bluing. We've got the barrel, the receiver, charging handle, and this front loop, and of course our tube. And when we're bluing, before we get to bluing, there's some of these screws here. I'm going to clean them up really well. And we'll get them blued where it'll look real nice also. Alright, well as far as this uh, barrel and receiver assembly, like I say, I'm just going to sit here and just keep on, keep it on. Just get her just as slick as I can with the scotch bright. I mean it does a good job. Alright, we have our all of our supplies ready. Got a little steel wool here. Got our pads. First thing we're gonna do, these are the pieces that we're re-bluing, including these screws which I've already cleaned up. We're gonna grab our blue and rust remover. nice clean pad and I do have a new pair of clean gloves on. Now let's cover everything with this. Like I say this is just like a mild acid. It'll get all the grease and stuff like that off of there. And that's very very important so we get a good bluing on it. I mean Look at that pad. Matter of fact, I'm going to go ahead and flip it over and use the other side. It's a good coat on there. Because anywhere there's a spot of grease, I mean, even a fingerprint, you're going to know it because your bluing would not work well in that spot. I know, I've had it happen to me a time or two. We might have to do this twice. This is just... I mean, if you look at it, it looks... It looked clean until we started putting this on there. And now, I feel like we're working with a, a piece of something that's just filthy. I'll let, let that one soak there a little bit. Grab us another clean pad. Get our tube. As I 
get it on there liberally. Don't be afraid to use too much. Stuff's not expensive. You like anything else, the better prep work you do, the better your final product's going to turn out. I got a good soak on that. What we'll do is let that sit there and work its way in a little bit. Not too long. Now I have some uh, fresh clean water right here. What we'll do let's get the lid on that. Boy, that stuff stinks. Grab our steel wool. Just rub all that stuff right off of there. Alright, not too bad. We'll set this on the floor. All I'm doing is just bring some water up and being 100 percent sure I got all of this barrel right here. Up. Throw that one away because it's got acid on it. Now, throw them away. Go, clean paper towel. Now, we'll take our Cleaner degreaser. Basically, do the same thing. There we go. I'll start getting all of our parts dried off really well. Then take our heat gun, because it's like a, not even a nice day out here today. Threatening rain, a little on the cool side. So, not good for getting rid of any moisture, that's for sure. That's how come we get all this stuff to work with so we can do it. Alright, and I'm really not sure if this receiver is going to blue or not, but we're going to try it. Alright, get out a perma blue, fresh pad, and yeah, let's see what we can get out of it. Ah, too bad that won't do. Well, it is what it is, guys.
Let us sit there and do his thing. Have a clean piece of the four aught steel wool. We'll let this sit here for a little bit and quote cure up some. Then we'll dunk it in the water lightly with steel wool and then do it again. <laughs> 